This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 488, Bull versus Bear Markets. What do they mean? By Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And I am Dan, your host and narrator, and happy middle of the week to you. Happy Wednesday. If you're new here, this is where I read to you each weekday from some of the best personal finance blogs out there. It's like an audiobook that uh, continues day after day with a bunch of different authors, and it's all completely free of charge. And this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Learning, the online learning platform with thousands of expert-led video tutorials to help you build your business, tech, and creative skills. LinkedIn Learning now features content from lynda.com. They're the leader in online learning for the past 20 years. For a free 30-day trial, visit linkedin.com slash finance and start achieving more today. For now, let's hear from Ramit as we optimize your life. Bull versus bear markets. What do they mean? By Ramit Sethi with IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. What are some of the greatest rivalries out there? A few that probably come to mind are Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, Coke versus Pepsi, and Tupac versus Biggie. Let me add in one of my favorites from the financial world, bull versus bear. No, I'm not talking about some ancient feud between two deadly animals, though that does sound awesome. Bull versus bear describes investment trends that have the power to impact the global financial market. It's a phrase you've probably heard thrown around or referenced before, but what does it mean? And how does it affect you and your investments? Let's take a look at bull versus bear markets, examples of each and the impact they have on your financial strategy to set the record straight. The difference between bull versus bear markets. In a nutshell, bull market means the market is up. Bear market means the market is down. That's it. Oh, you wanted more? Great. Let's take a dive into each market and see how you can recognize one when it happens. Bull market, market is up. You've probably seen the famous Wall Street bull statue before and its placement within the beating heart of America's financial institution is no mistake. Bull market is a phrase used to describe an economic environment that is growing and optimistic. And though there's no set way to identify a bull market, it typically means that asset classes of all types, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, they rise for an extended period of time. That's why you'll hear about investors who are confident in the market being described as bullish. Other key indicators of a bull market are, one, high gross domestic product or GDP. If a country's GDP is high, that means consumer spending is also high, a common indicator of a flourishing economy. Two, rising stock prices. More people are confident that the market will continue to go up, so most major indices will also rise. Three, more long stock trading. Since the financial climate is hopeful, investors are more hungry to buy shares during a bull market and hold on to them, confident they will continue to rise. This is known as long stock trading. Four, low unemployment rates. Growth in businesses means growth in the workforce. More people will have jobs in a bull market. When a bull market occurs, it's typically here for a long time. Morningstar conducted a study that took a look at market trends from 1926 to 2017 and discovered that the average bull market lasted nine years. Not only that, but the average total return from a bull market period is 472%. Notable bull market examples. One, post-World War II. The years during and following World War II, from the 1940s through the 1950s, were exemplary of a bull market as the US economy prospered when millions of soldiers returned home. Two, the 1980s to 2000s. A long bull market occurred from the early 80s up until the dot-com bubble bursting in the early 2000s. During this bull market, there was an average market gain of nearly 600%. And three, today. As of writing this in 2017, the United States is currently going through a bull market. Jobs are growing, the average returns on investments are high, and we're starting to bounce back from the effects of the housing market crash and subsequent bear market that occurred in 2008. More on that in a bit. That's a bull market in a nutshell. Just like light is to dark though, the bull market can only exist with its opposite, the bear market. Bear market, market is down. If the bull market describes growth and stability, the bear market represents the inverse, pessimism, loss on investments, and a usually regarded bad economy. A bear market describes an economic trend in which there is pessimism about the market. Generally, there's stagnation or a downward trend. People's confidence in the economy is low and more people are selling stock than buying. A bear market is also a good indicator of a recession, a long-term period of negative growth. As such, investors who are pessimistic about market trends are typically described as being bearish. 
Other key indicators of a bear market. One, loss of jobs. Low employment rates are typically a sign of a bear market. As companies lose business, this results in layoffs and the loss of work. Two, market prices are falling. Fewer people are willing to buy stock, and as a result, prices of shares go down and the market falters. Three, more short stock trading. This is when investors sell shares they don't own in order to buy the shares later at a lower price. It's one way to benefit from a down market, a very bearish move. Though a bear market seems bad, it doesn't typically last long. Remember that study from Morningstar? It shows that the average bear market lasts only 1.4 years, while the average cumulative loss from a bear market is 41%. Also, there are several ways investors can benefit from a bear market. One example, would you rather be buying a house when prices are going up or down? Here's another. Would you rather invest in the market at its bottom or at its peak? Notable bear market examples. One, the Great Depression. The stock market crash of 1929 kicked off the start of the most famous bear market period, the Great Depression. It didn't end for years afterward, and during that time, millions of Americans lost their jobs, homes, and well-being. It wasn't just America either. The entire world felt the impacts of America's bear market. Two, the dot-com burst. The years following the dot-com burst of the early 2000s saw a massive dip in the stock market as well as the shuttering of countless tech companies. Household wealth also took a hit of over $6 trillion, leading to a recession, according to 538. Three, the housing market crash. Though nearly a decade has passed, the housing market crash of 2008 is still a fresh wound for many people. In its wake, millions of workers lost their jobs, homeowners lost their houses, and consumer spending fell by 8%. Though we're in a bull market now, we're still feeling the effects of the crash and its subsequent bear market today. Bear markets can be scary, but they don't tend to last very long, though that's admittedly cold comfort for investors going through one. The origins of bull versus bear market. Now you know the difference between a bull versus a bear market. Congrats. But why the heck are they called that? Traditionally, it's believed that the term comes from the way each animal attacks. A bull with its squat legs and sharp horns attacks by swinging its head upwards, like the upward swing of the economy in bull market years. Bulls are also typically lively and ferocious animals, not unlike the optimistic investor. A bear, on the other hand, will swat downwards with its paw when it attacks, like the downward trend of a recession. That, coupled with the fact that bears can also be found hibernating for long periods of time, makes it no surprise that bear will be used to describe slow market periods. Others believe that their connection to the stock market can be traced back to the Elizabethan period and ancient Rome. During this time, the two animals were the center of bloody bear and bull baiting shows, where the two animals would fight for people's entertainment. Over time, the association stuck and became associated with the financial sphere. You just listened to the post titled Bull vs. Bear Markets, What Do They Mean? by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Learning, now featuring content from Lynda.com, the leader in online learning for the past 20 years. Now, time is money, and whether you work in accounting or just deal with spreadsheets as part of your workflow, LinkedIn Learning can improve your efficiency. They have an extensive library of dedicated Excel courses and tutorials, so you can master things like advanced formulas and pivot tables. LinkedIn Learning works with software publishers to develop up-to-date courses on all the latest software every time a new version is released. And LinkedIn Learning has courses for all experience levels, covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, business strategies, and more. Now, I got to take the course Managing Your Personal Finances, and it's really great because it goes over the three main parts of personal finance, spending, saving, and investing. Of course, you're welcome to explore all of their courses. They actually have recommendations curated just for you, and it's really easy to find the right video course that's perfect for you from their extensive library. There are no hidden charges or upsells. You can access all the courses you want, all for one monthly price, and it's available worldwide. Learn from anywhere and from your computer, tablet, or mobile device. And we've got a special deal for you today. You can get a free 30-day trial with LinkedIn Learning by visiting linkedin.com slash finance. That's linkedin.com slash finance, all lowercase, and we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. And that's gonna do it for me today. Thanks to all of you for listening each and every day. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I will catch you tomorrow with a post from PT Money. See you there, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast. 
but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.